Hi there, Serial Trader here. Let's check in with Weed. And uh, wow, I mean, uh, one of the strongest things you'll see in the stock market, uh, you're staring at it right here. Okay, um, this actually warrants a wave count change. Um, and let me get to that in a second here. So where's our, where's our wave five? Here we go. So we're definitely uh, had our just very abbreviated wave four uh, pullback. Now we're coming up in wave five, and that'll actually be, in my opinion, I think we'll get rid of this fib uh, structure here. That'll be, uh, you know, likely part of a larger wave three at this point because there's just so much strength it warrants the count to be changed a little bit. So zooming out, um, and I'll just, I'll, I'll work from this low over here. Let's just uh, clean this up since this is in the past at this point. Uh, get rid of all that. Okay, um, I suppose we can go with that. And maybe actually move that over here like this. Put this over here. Okay, that, that works for me. All right, so we actually have off the low over here. Okay, and this, even though it was a, a triangle, it can still be counted as a different pattern. And this uh, fits better with this recent action, so. We have a one up, two down, three, four, five. That's for an initial, okay? As, uh, as crazy as, as this may seem, uh, we have an initial one up there, okay? And then we have a two down here. We're working a three. We're gonna need a four and then another five. Let me just get this uh, sorted. Okay, is that the correct degree? Intermediate. That works, okay. Because our sub waves are minor, this is intermediate, that, that's good. Okay. So examining this, we have a uh, wave two, let's do a fib retracement. So I'll have this low from this high, uh, I think we had a pretty, pretty much a 618 retracement there. Uh, yeah, in between the 618 and the 76 retracement, so that's certainly a palatable wave two. And we have that distinctive, uh, get rid of the magnet here. We have that distinctive uh, ABC three wave decline. Uh, okay, now if we draw the base channel and uh, just working it like this. Base channel off of here, and I'll get that magnet mode back so it sticks. Okay, one more time here. Base channel off the low from the peak of wave one. So we've clearly broken out of the base channel. Confirmation of third wave price action. Large degree, like intermediate wave three price action. Uh, now at that point, no, nothing to say that wave three is done yet, although it looks mature. So now we have a one, two, three, four, and we're working a fifth up within three. We'll get to the other chart in a moment to look at the subdivisions. At that point, whenever that's done, I'm not saying it's done yet, but it should be getting uh, awful close. We would do a Fibonacci retracement of this entire wave three and start to look for some levels, uh, possibly for a wave four pullback. Um, let's get the levels, uh, where I want them here. Uh, okay. 382, 50%. Those would be the two most common wave, wave four, uh, pullback levels. So the 382 would be 54.99 and the 50%, which I like more after such an extreme move, it would deserve a deeper pullback, uh, based on experience would be 50, 61. So that'd be quite attractive. Um, and then obviously anything up to and including um, the wave one high at 48.72 would be an acceptable non-overlapping wave four pullback, okay? Now, if we just look at the amount of time that was consumed by wave two and just drag that over, 
Uh, wave 4 should consume a similar amount of time, if not a greater amount of time. Often wave 4 actually consumes more, especially if it's a triangle or a flat or something more complex, complex in nature, uh, which it likely would be because we just have a simple ABC zigzag, so you'd expect a more complex pattern to alternate with that for wave 4. So as far as time goes, something like that. I'll just get rid of that line. Uh, and then after wave four was done, we would expect another impulse wave up uh, in wave five to new highs, right? So that's kind of the picture now. Uh, now, shorter term, I mean, this is just a, one of the biggest green candlesticks I think I can find on this whole chart. I think dollar-wise, it absolutely is. Uh, so the, just the amount of market cap that was added today alone on seemingly nothing is outrageous. Uh, so this is a runaway train, but uh, it's going to derail here pretty soon and have this pullback. Don't know exactly when. Uh, don't know exactly how much it's going to go down until we at least start getting some structure to analyze. But it is coming. RSI right back up uh, almost at 80 again. Last time we were at 80 was right here. And that's where we made a high at 62.79 and went as low as... 53.13, so almost a $10 drop when our side was at 80 the last time. Here we are knocking on the door again. Uh, and I think I'll also highlight on the weekly chart, RSI is now at uh, 79, almost 80 on the weekly chart. So extreme overbought on weekly and daily. That's definitely a warning that the party's almost over, at least uh, short term. Um, okay, and let's go on the shorter term time frame. So this was the uh, bearish, uh, short-term bearish interpretation I had. So that didn't play out at all. And we didn't come down in this final leg down uh, before resuming the uptrend. We just resumed it right away. So I was paired analytically for that. Uh, I didn't take any uh, positions around this. Um, but analytically prepared for this possibility that we just had this very simple but ugly ABC down for wave four. Um, and that we were now doing this uh, one up, two down, and now coming up in a third wave. Well, we're certainly coming up in a third wave. So short term, uh, still need some subdivisions, need a four, and where's my five here? It's over here. So yeah, we need a four, then a five, and then we can view this overall, uh, you know, fifth wave up, minor wave five as complete, which would complete that intermediate uh, wave three, which should lead to an intermediate wave four pullback. Uh, so it looks like we can go a little higher still short term, but uh, upside should be quite limited, uh, well, relatively speaking, quite limited relatively speaking, compared to the potential downside of the next big swing. So that's just kind of a short term uh, look at things. And then, yeah, this is what we're definitely looking for. Looking for that intermediate wave three uh, to peak. I'll actually be interested in buying some uh, put options once this thing really looks like it's starting to stall out. Once I can get a more mature uh, five wave structure that looks complete here, I'll start uh, adding in some, some longer term put positions just in anticipation of this fourth wave pullback, which uh, I think very highly likely to happen here uh, sooner than later. But we'll certainly keep checking in with this as price action warrants it. Uh, I mean, what what a what a beast of a move to the upside. Unmistakable that it's the third wave. So that's why it warranted this overall uh, wave count change here. And uh, all that really does is make this more long-term bullish, this wave count change. Uh, which certainly seems warranted at the moment, given the uh, recent price action. All right. And then, uh, you know, obviously... The next big buying, you know, swing buying opportunity, longer term buying opportunity will be this fourth wave pullback. That's what I'll be looking for. Uh, but shorter term, there should be some, uh, well, very short term, like day trading style. There might be some more upside opportunity, but in between longer and shorter term, I think there'll be a decent uh, bear play for this pullback. Uh, certainly looking to get position for that in the coming days here, potentially. All right, that should be good for now. Serial Trader signing off.